Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley is brought to you by Aggressive Marketing Solutions, your solution for all business social media needs. If you need a team of social media marketers and content creators to help you build your brand on social media, text WES2020 to 541-709-6502 today. Get started building your brand on social media. Success is defined differently by every individual. Some have never even considered what it is. I hope when I get older I'll be successful. What does that even mean? Money? Cars? Big house? On this show, we strive to look at it a little deeper, learning from successful individuals on what they believe success really is and how to obtain it. Everybody, enjoy the show. This is Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. Thank you for being patient with us. We got a little delay on the t start here. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had the best sound possible, and so it was a fun time, but we got it handled. Uh, if you are watching this live on Facebook right now, please do me a favor. Hit the watch party. Do that. If you're listening to this on the podcast, do me a favor, hit the review and give me a little bit of review. Give me a five-star review or let me know why you don't think that I deserve that. Today is episode 28. We have a great guest. His name is Jay Finning. Jay's got a lot going on. He hosts a hard parking podcast. He has a great YouTube channel. He's co-founded the One Auto Movement and has a badass car. Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, Wes. Happy to be here. Hey, man. It's great. It's great to have you on here. I'm glad that you took the time. I know that it's a little bit earlier over there, but we had a little bit of delay and you're missing dinner. So I appreciate it. The delay is all my fault. I take full responsibility for it. Trying to get the microphone going as a technology guy. It's kind of funny being the one that can't get this tech correct. Hey, but you know, one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit too is about your perfectionism because that is something that really plays into this whole situation. So we'll talk about that a little bit. So we kind of mentioned a few of the things that you do. Can you give us a little background on yourself, kind of where you're from and, and, and what you do? We'll, we'll dive into the other fun stuff, but let's talk about some of the boring stuff. Boring stuff. Let's see. From Texas, moved to Michigan, and now I live in Arizona for six years. That's the real fat and skinny of, a, of a, my journey. Um, when I'm not doing hobby stuff, I'm a healthcare IT contractor and that's my ends, you know, um, it's not necessarily a passion It's my job, but I'm pretty fortunate to have a job like that when I do have a contract because it allows me to travel around. And that's the reason why I have the podcast and I have so many Instagrams because I like to share some of the adventures that I go through the good times, the bad times. Um, it's my way of showing people who I am and how real life can be the ups and downs, the fun, the silly stuff the things that we all kind of think about that drive us crazy, but not enough to really complain about or everyone's going to throw stuff at us. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of it. I throw a lot of stuff hobby wise and uh, I'm into cars and in a bunch of miscellaneous crazy things, I guess. So let's get in, let's talk a little bit about the car. Cause the car is kind of the cool thing. What, what got you into cars? Why do why cars? What, uh, what did you do when you were younger? What was that moment that made you get into cars? You know, I don't know exactly. I think one of the one of the best things about children is they're real, they're pure. They're not always guided. So if you look around, you'll see like little kids that just grab stuff and play with it. And I don't know if I grabbed cars and played with them, but the earliest the earliest memory I have of falling in love with a car, I think I was at a poster store. Because remember back in the day, we had poster stores. Yeah. And there was no internet. You know, um, our wallpapers were literally on the walls of our houses. So you'd go to yeah. these malls and you'd flip through these huge displays and you'd find something you like. It might be some scantily clad somebody like a Bud like a Budweiser chick or something. Or it might yeah. be a car. And um yeah, I think the first car poster I had was a Vector, a Vector W two, which is a very low production car. Actually that was a prototype, but when they came out with the W eight and I just fell in love with the car. And then I had a Porsche, and I had a, probably a Lamborghini and I don't know, it was just something with cars. 
So you don't just drive them though. Cause I think that that's kind of a, you have the hard parking co- podcast and we'll talk about that a little bit more cause it's kind of a car thing, but it's not really a car thing, but it kind of is again, but you don't just drive them, right? You work on them as well. Correct. I do. I'm, I'm kind of an average garage wrencher. So you can't be afraid. In my opinion, you can't be afraid to dive into your car and, and mess with it. Cause it's kind of, it's fun. It's fun kind of experimenting and pulling things out, changing out steering wheels and stuff. Anything anything overly complicated, I kind of leave that up to the professionals. Um, I have a lot of friends that get their hands dirty a whole lot more than I do, but I can do basic stuff, you know, like every person, you know, just change the brakes or you maybe do an axle. I used to be scared because I have an NSX. I used to be scared to touch the car. So for the first six months, I wouldn't even touch the car. <laughs> It's funny because even the old cars, I mean, I remember basically standing in the underneath the hood of an old Honda Civic I had because there was so much room to work. But when you get a car that you wanted your whole life, you're just scared to do anything with it. But once you get over that, then you rip it up. And I probably rebuilt my car visually probably four or five times over the I don't know, eight years that I've owned it. And it's amazing. You know, I know. I know you know this about me, but I was in automotive kind of, you know, changing tires and doing a bunch of suspension stuff and things like that. And it's amazing how you, you treat everything with like kid gloves, right? Cause you're always afraid that you're going to mess something up or whatever. And everything has its, its purpose. So once you get past that, you're not going to mess it up. It's, it's really amazing. You know, I mean, I hope my dad changed a motor in a truck one time, which that's the biggest thing that I've ever done, but it's just making sure that you take the parts out and put them back where they're supposed to go and put them back in the right way. So it's kind of crazy. It's that way with anything in life, I think. Yeah, I can't yeah. promise that everything yeah. I took apart, I put back the right way. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's like there's always a screw missing or you put the wrong bolt in the wrong place, but it, it worked and it held it in place and you can always find a replacement if you need to. <laughs> as long as it starts. Right, as long as it starts. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about let's talk about your car that you currently have because I think it's a great story. We talk we've talked quite a bit about it, but you have an NSX right now, and you've done some crazy things with this thing. Um, tell tell us about your car a little bit. So it's a 1997 Acura NSX, and I owned it for five years before I decided to do something extra to it. There was nothing wrong with the car. Um, there's a lot of information about these cars out on the internet. Um, they're iconic. They're a uh, timeless design. They're a blast to drive. They're not always the fastest, but you almost, you really don't care. But when I came to, to uh, Arizona, I would go on these long cruises and I've never felt so outdated on these cruises because the guys with the really fast cars, they're gone. And the guys with the really slow cars are in the back and you're somewhere in the middle. And so I decided I wanted a little more. And after doing some research, cause we have a great community, the NSX community is a great community. And I ended up, I decided to go turbo with the car and I decided to start going into car shows. And so, um, I wanted to make a big splash. So one of my goals was getting a Decima, which is arguably the world's, you know, um, premier automotive trade show, or it is the world's premier automotive trade show. And, um, that became a goal of mine for 2017. And so what that required was like, you can't just take a regular car and get into SEMA. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of the car guys don't understand because to be a car person, there's so many different categories. You can be a track guy. You could be all about car shows. Um, you could be a, um, uh, someone who just likes putting 200, 300,000 miles on your car. And once you decide to get into the car show game, it's a different animal. And so there's a lot of things that you do to your car. You have to make it stand out. Um, one of my goals is always, to build my car to where not only do, do I really like it and appreciate it, but other people appreciate it too and um, not go too far. And what does that really mean? That's an arbitrary term, I know. But it's always been important to me to have a really nice looking car no matter what I do to it. And so where it is now, and you know, I, I had it wrapped for three years and I gained a lot of cool, a lot of cool stuff happened to it. And, and I think part of this podcast about you know shaping success is you can't be afraid to do something different something out of the norm and it wasn't a snap decision i did a lot of study work um and when i i I designed the wrap that i had on the car and i I had like a small focus group like i had a, a handful of people that i showed the design to and bounced ideas off hey what do you guys think if i did this and what do you guys think if i were to do that 
just to kind of keep you honest and in check. Cause sometimes as a, as a person, we can come up with some in, insane ideas and you need someone to kind of walk you off of that. But at the same time, if you're on the edge, you need someone to say, yeah, it's okay to do it. And so in doing that, some of the cool stuff that happened to me is just, I never could have, I mean, I'm right now, I keep looking up cause I'm staring at the little one forty third scale model of my car <laughs> in a light case. And I've showed that, shared that with you before, because that's the one that a guy from China became such a huge fan of my car. He decided to make miniatures of it and sell it. And another NSX friend of mine hit me up and said, Hey, there's this guy that's, that's making copies of your car. Did you know that? It's like, no, I have no idea. Um, and, and a lot of people said, well, that's a, that's cool. And it's, and it's not cool, but you can't do anything about it. Um, and they were wrong in a sense. So I had two options at that point. I could either shut, shut them down for not asking permission or I can work with them because a lot of people say, well, screw that. You should be making money off of it. I was like, eh, I'm not a, I'm just some guy. You know, I'm just some guy who designed a cool car, designed a cool wrap, and that wrap has a lot of fans. So either A, I can just kill the whole project, or B, I can work with them. And I'm glad we ended up working together. They gave me some design control that I asked for. I said, hey, let me have some design control over the final product. Let me put my name on it, because my name wasn't anywhere on it to begin with. And because I know there's somewhere there's somebody who really wants that car, because I always wanted a miniature of, of it as well. And so I thought that... Um, that was extremely successful. In fact, that I just, the company who sells them volunteered me to sign one the other day. So I received it for some guy <laughs> in some other state and I signed it for him and I sent it off. But then I told the company, I said, please ask me first before you volunteer me to autograph something for somebody. But it's kind of one of those things where you just never, you never really expect that. And if you expected it, then maybe you're doing everything for the wrong reason. So I think that we're sitting here, we're talking about it and you're, you're just kind of, kind of skating around the car right now is completely black, right? It's a beautiful looking car. Um, yeah. we'll talk about where they can take a look at it, where it's at. It's beautiful black, but what you did, what you did to this thing was with that wrap that you personally designed and you took the time and you, this perfectionist mentality, which is kind of why, why it took us a little bit longer to get started because we want, because you wanted it to be perfect and that's okay. I'm, and I'm not like trying to knock that because I want everyone to know that that's, I appreciate that so much about you. That is the coolest thing about you. But we've talked about this rap a little bit in depth and how much you put into it, how much you taught yourself. Can you talk about that process a little bit? You know, give us kind of a brief synopsis of you creating that and what you did to have all the details with it. What did it take to make that happen for you? Well, it's kind of one of those things where you have two types of people, I think, when it comes to the design process. You have people who have an idea of what they want, and you have people who know exactly what they want. And the people who have an idea of what they want, it's easier to say, hey, third party, this is what I'm looking for. I have no idea how to do it. Will you produce it to me? Will you produce it for me? They pay their money, the third party does it, they love it, they're excited, they're static, whatever. I'm the type of guy where I always thought I was going to be an artist when I was a kid. A lot of people thought I was going to be an artist when I was a kid because I pay so much attention to detail when I draw as the illustration. And I knew that there really wasn't anyone out there who could, who could uh, produce what it is that I had, had envisioned in my head. And if they could, it would be very expensive. So what I decided to do was go out and, well, first I went online and downloaded hundreds and hundreds of photos of fighter jets some of them from the cartoon because the cartoon is based off of Robotech's the Macross saga. Macross is from Japan. And I wanted to make sure that everything was accurate. I wanted to make sure that obviously uh, a car can't fly like a fighter jet, but you can make it look like a fighter jet. And you want to make sure that the danger exhaust and the no step and the ejection and all the, all the things, the rescue, all the, th all the markings you see on a, on a fighter jet make sense where you put them on a car. And what that involved was a lot of study. I reached out to some friends that were in the military. I have a friend down in Tucson named, named Chuck who just retired from the Air Force. I drove two and a half hours down to see him and sitting in his living room. And he showed me, he has a, a um, ACES 2 ejection seat that he's turned into a rocking chair. So I went down there and we spent a lot of time going around that 
that uh, yeah, that's funny. We went. We we spent a lot of time going around every detail of that of that ejection seat because I I wanted to know what everything did because I wanted to produce little panels for the interior, but I didn't want to produce something that made absolutely no sense. You know, and I think it's kind of that education because at some point somebody was going to see the car and appreciate it for the extra work that I put in, whereas most people would have no idea, but that's fine. Um, but it was all about trying to be as, as accurate as I could. And, and I even visited a few, um, 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 museums, air museums. So I can walk up and see all the markings on the fighter jet, because sometimes when you download these pictures, you still can't really see what it is. And you want to make sure if you put something on the wrap, it makes sense. And so I was surprised some of the stuff that I saw, I was like, oh, that's what that is. I've looked at 400 photos. I had no idea. That's what I was looking at, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just, and, and, and one of the big things about, um, detail is some people either have attention to it or some people don't. And as a healthcare IT person, there it is right there. Oh, that's so sweet. I'd always, um, yeah, my friend Danny took that photo and actually that's, I'm, that is legit. That is legit fighter jet gear I'm wearing. That's an F-16 suit by, you know, Chuck down in Tucson gave me two helmets, all the mask, all the, all the, the G suits, everything just for me to take some cool photos with. But yeah, so not, not to make it go too far, but yeah, I just, I just really wanted to make sure that the, that the wrap was as detailed as possible or as best that I could do, because there's people out there who are far better at Photoshop and far better at art than I am, but. I just wanted to make sure I gave it 150, 200%. And I think I did a pretty good job of it. Yeah. And it's funny because we, you know, obviously like we have these conversations every single day, it, it seems like, and we talk about things like that, creating these, creating designs and I'm working with on my logo and, and it's kind of like, I need to kind of do some of the work, but I'm not, I'm the other person, right? I'm the person that you were talking about who would rather have someone else do it for me because I'm not that art. I don't have that artistic hand, you know, and I probably do, but it's just going to take more work from me and I have to be dedicated to doing it. So I think you talked quite a bit about how much that process was like you were teaching yourself how to do Photoshop. You were taking classes and all that stuff just to learn how to do that. So it was something from you. And that's, that's what I like about this whole story is that you spent so much time on it that probably when you looked at this thing, I think, I think if I had done that, I would look at it and know it's directly from me. You know, and if there was a mistake, it was, it was brought from you. Like they're going to say, Hey, this is it. And you're going to say, no, this is why I did it. And I love that, that detail. So this, this brought on some other things. Go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, every time I looked at it, I saw stuff that I would do differently if I ever did it again. So. Yeah. And that doesn't surprise me knowing you the way that I know you now, um, because it, you know, we talked about writing papers and things like that and how you will spend over and over correcting it over and over again. And I'm just like, man, I got through college just pumping those things out. And I, you know, I thought that my mind was like, you know, I ad lib a lot of things and it's like perfect. And I got an A on it. So not that it was an A worthy paper, but someone decided that it was. So, um, that's, that's part of that, that deal. That's like, that's that, that drive to make sure that it's exactly how you want it. Something that you can put your name on. And we talked a little bit about it cause my brother's an engineer and it's, it's about putting that stamp on there that you're proud of. And so I think that that's a lot of what I feel from you is that you're trying to be able to stamp that and say, Hey, this is me. I want to be proud that that was something that I created. So that yeah, led sure. to you, that led to some other stuff too. Cause you have what let's talk about one auto a little bit. Cause you're kind of a co-founder of one auto movement. Right. And, um, how did that come about? Was that from before or after you wrapping the car? Was this something that got created, you know, on the fly? Let's talk about that a little bit. So we, we launched one auto movement in April, April 24th of 2016. And what that was, was shortly after I moved here again, trying to, trying to figure out the car game out here. Cause it's so different than where I was from or where I had lived in, in, in Michigan and, and I can't get the people there to even comprehend how different it is down here in the, in the giant city of Phoenix and just this region of the United States. And it's, and it's big in, in Texas and it's huge in, 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 um, in Florida and stuff as well, obviously. But, and I guess a little bit in New York, 
Um, but we used to, there's, there were five or six of us and, and we would buy cool stuff that we saw on Instagram, you know, other, other cultures. And one thing I noticed is they never really said, thank you, you know, and, and we would use their hashtags and stuff. And, and I, I asked the owner, I said, Hey, um, I noticed you never say anything to us. You're posting everybody else's cars. And I know we don't have the coolest cars, you know, I mean, I saw my black and SX, um, but some of the other guys, you know, they didn't really have well, only one or two other people had like these super cool cars. Right. And, um, I said, Hey, if we don't fit the bill, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's fine. It's okay to not fit what you guys are doing, but we should probably stop representing you guys and just figure something out on our own. And so I got a hold of some of the people and I said, Hey, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but this is something I noticed. And some of them said, yeah, I noticed that too. It's like, all right, well, give me some time. So one day I was in my think tank and thinking about, um, <laughs> yeah, so one time Sorry, I was in I my know think, what the, just, I know what the uh, think tank is. Think yeah. Yep. Yeah, thinking about everything. I'm like, you know, like, why does it even matter? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I drive or my friend drives or my other friend drives. Like none of that matters. Like we all, we all like cars. We're all into stuff. And, you know, I've known people that are Ford people and the Ford people hate Chevys, no matter what Chevy produces. And the Chevy people hate Ford people, no matter what Ford produces. I was like, you know what? That's BS. That's BS. It's okay to look across the parking lot and appreciate the work that somebody else has put into their vehicle, even if it's not your personal taste, no matter what it is. And I said, right. you know, we're all part of this one. We're all part of the same movement. We're all, we're all one auto. And I go, Oh crap. That's what it is. It's one auto. We're all part of this one auto movement. And so my, the, the saying is that we're, we're fueled by our passions, no matter what we're into, whether they're cars or, or, or whatever, we're, we're all fueled by our passions, right? We're fueled by our passions. Yep. And, um, we're driven by the culture. The culture dictates what we're typically into. And so we're fueled by passion. We're driven by culture and we're all enthusiasts of something. And so we're all one auto and that's where it came from. And so that turned into a pretty big thing. I think that that one, that one out of all your Instagram accounts, and I know that that's not just personally yours has one of the biggest followings, correct? Or well, your, your, your purse, your car page as well has a very big following. Yeah, the one auto movement, one of the things that was important to us as a group was organic growth because it's a cool logo design, um, but I didn't want it to be just another brand, you know, because brands come and go. I wanted it to mean right. something to people because once, once a brand means something to somebody, then they're always going to be with you because uh, they understand. And one of the things that I, that I hit on is say, hey, if you're not allowed in that car club, if people are laughing at you because you don't have the cool wheels or if your car isn't painted because you can't afford a paint job, but you're out there and you're washing your car anyway, you know, if you have pride in what you do, it's not about your car. It's about you as a person. And you're always welcome in the One Auto family. You're always going to be one of us. Come hang out with us. And it was hard for people to understand because they're like, okay, well, how do I join? You know, is it a car club? It's like, it's not a car club. It's a movement. It's a culture. It's, it's like the automotive peace sign. And so it's, it's, it's fun to kind of look up here in, in the Phoenix area and there's all sorts of cars that have one auto on them. And I don't, I feel bad cause I don't know everyone, but at the same time, it's good that it's gotten to the point where I don't know everyone. Cause I remember at first, like the first few months, a car would pop up with one auto on it and everybody would be like, Hey, I saw one auto on a black Pontiac Grand Am. Did you, did you sell them that? Did you sell them that thing? <laughs> like, I don't know who that is. They stole it from us. Cause we were really protective of the logo and the brand. Now it's a, now it's a registered trademark, you know, yeah. myself and, 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 uh, basically he's like my brother, but the other co-owner up in Michigan, you know, we, we got the trademark taken care of a couple of years ago and, um, we haven't cared on, on that granular of a level anymore. And it's good that you don't have to care anymore. So now out here in, in Phoenix, I have a one auto council and they help me plan because the goal is I don't want people to think I am one auto. We're all one auto. One auto has many faces. And so they have access to the account and I want them to talk to people. So then, cause a lot of times we get DMS and they're like, Hey, what's up, bro? I'm like, yo man, it's not me. If you want to hit me up, hit me up on another account. And we try to do charity events when we can. We're not a charity organization, but we try to make a difference. 
you know, one of the things I used to have on my, on my J travels page was make a difference or don't, you know, and then to me, that's pretty simple. So if we can go on a car cruise and we can collect water and, and give it to the fire department, then, then why not? You know, we've had a couple um, events with the United Food Bank of Arizona last year, and we're hoping to get into it this year. If stuff doesn't keep getting canceled. As of right now, it should be 1123 is when the next um, one less event is. And that's what we call it, one less. And it's it's kind of a play on words because it's one auto. But if you can make one less family go without food, one less older person, one less child. And that's why we call it the one less event. So, you know, that's that's one auto. You know, we just try to make a difference and we're in, I don't know, maybe 17 or 18 countries at some point in the last four years, oh, five dang. years. Yeah. I used to track every state and, 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 um, if you go to the website and you go like, where is one auto, I think that's what the link is or one auto in the world. You can see all the locations and I'm even missing a few locations. Yeah. That's pretty crazy because, you know, when you were talking about that, that's exactly it. It really, you know, firms up what that's about because, like you said, it doesn't matter. You got a Mustang over there. You got a Camaro over there. You got the NSX, you got all these different cars and it's just, it's everyone being passionate about something. So, so we have, we also have the other thing that we're going to talk about a little bit. So you mentioned your Jade travels page, and I think that's kind of the home to hard parking. Is that pretty much where all that happens with your hard parking podcast? Yeah, it's kind of funny. That's a good question. So, uh, you know, we have the Facebook page, hard parking media and I do a lot of it on my J travels Instagram because the thing about car people is car people only care about cars in a sense, right? Especially on Instagram. So if I drop the, the, the hard parking podcast stuff on my NA2 NSX, my car page, it's just, nobody wants to see it, but it's funny. Cause I, that page has a lot more followers. So when I promote, I promote in that page's story because more people are going to see the story. And what I found, there's a lot of cross followers that follow my J travels page and my car page. So that unfortunately for them, they get to see it twice. But, um, yeah, that's, that's really why I do the bulk of it. I do the bulk of the story posts on my main car page and I do the bulk of the page posts on the J travels page for that reason. Yeah. So hard parking, you know, hard parking co podcast, we'll talk a little bit about like the name of it. Cause when I first saw it, I'm like, it's kind of like, it's the logo, it says hard parking, but then it's like the Noah's crossed out. I'm trying to look at it on my iPad over here and see it. Like it was a little confusing at first. So let's talk about that. What's the, what's the hard parking part talk, uh, about? So a friend of mine helped me start the podcast early in season one. And we kind of fumbled around and tried to figure out what we, what we were going to call this thing. And we came up with hard parking podcast and the term hard parking essentially means not going anywhere, almost in a, almost like stuck, but I take it like we're here. This podcast is here. This podcast is not going anywhere. And since it's loosely automotive, cause you've heard it, it's like automotive comedy in a sense. It's um, I, I designed the logo and I, and it used to be a no parking sign. So the full logo, it looks like it's the rear, it's the back end of two cars, which typically you'd see a tow truck in a car silhouette getting towed away. And then the no parking, that's when I crossed out the no and made hard and then added like the, the, the podcast underneath. So that's what the logo means. And that's what the podcast means. Like uh, this podcast is here. This podcast isn't going anywhere. And I decided to make a commitment to it probably within my first three months of doing the podcast that I'm, I'm all in. And like anything else that I'm all in, I go 150, 200%. That's one of the things that I like about it as well. You know, I think that yours out of that whole group was the first one that I listened to. Uh, and then, you know, a couple other people that was, you know, I listened to Brian's and then we ran into Zach too. And so one of the things that I noticed about it is, Yes, it's, you know, you talk about automotive stuff on there. And I actually was on there talking about something a couple or last week's show or the week before. But it's it's something that, you know, people can relate to and listen to. And you talk about some of the current events and things that are going on. And that's kind of what drew me to you is just your your take on it, your objectivity, the way that you look at things and analyze them like you do your work as well. And you're you're finding your own way. Um and so it's, it's, it's a great podcast. If you guys haven't heard it yet, you should go check it out. But Jay is into perfection. And one of the things that I like about his podcast is that he's been kind of a mentor to me and a couple other people. And 
He's always willing to help you listen to your podcast or help you out and give you constructive criticism as long as you're willing to take it. Cause that's kind of a hard part. I think with most people is they sit there and they look at their podcast as this is my, this is my thing, you know, and, and don't you tear it down because, and it's not really tearing it down. You've helped me in so many ways. And I know you've helped a lot of people. That's why your title says podcaster and mentor down there for me because you mentor people and help them to create a better sounding podcast, have better content and things like that. Where did that come from? What you, you want to help people. And I just, I love that about you. What makes you want to be that person? You know, that's a great question. I'm not sure because I'm kind of a, I don't know if I'm more of a giver or a taker. Um, that's not up for me to decide. I think, um, I, I've always wanted to make some sort of a difference. It's kind of one of those things where it's like when you're working somewhere, right. You, you get that intrinsic value out of something. So I like right. being part of a team. I like making a difference, but I don't want to ever be the person who stands up on stage and accepts the award. I'm okay with kind of being in the back, being kind of like the, the, the person behind the person in a sense. And I know that doesn't sound like much of a go getter attack dog approach, but I think that you don't always have to rush into everything and, and be the first to open your mouth and be the first to show everybody what you know. I think, because there's always people in the room who are a little lost or who are a little behind. And I think making a difference to them and helping them get to where they need to be, it's just good feng shui, I guess, right? And um, any job that I've ever worked, it's like, I don't I don't want to be employee number 626, 62, whatever. I want to be J, you know, and, and I want my work to, to um, speak for itself. But again, I'm not going to say, look at all this stuff that I've done, you know, and sometimes it gets you in trouble in the workplace because you don't, you know, go and fight for yourself enough sometimes. But it's it's not up to me, I think, to really to judge that. Um, and yeah, so that's why I'm trying to help because I'll spend hours watching videos on how to do stuff. And sometimes I can't do it. And then and then I'll go ask for help. And then I hope that when it's time for me to ask for help, somebody will be there and 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 available to help me. And a lot of times you find people that will help as long as you reach out. And to the people that you were saying earlier, I mean, there's a lot of people who think that they've already got the best product out there. Good for them, I guess, you know, I'm never going to tell you if your podcast isn't any good, but if you have poor mic discipline, I'll ask you about it a little bit, or, you know, I'll say, Hey, what kind of microphone are you using? Have you tried this? Have you tried to sit differently? Have you tried to move the microphone away from your mouth? Because there's probably, well, before we got into this fun time that we have with everything that's <laughs> going on, there was over 850,000 podcasts. There's even more now. Right. I would guess a million podcasts across the world. And so people need to understand if you want, and, and this comes from the automotive, you know, this comes from doing sponsorships and being sponsored and asking for sponsorships and not getting allowed, you know, not getting picked up for sponsors. Um, if you want them, if you want somebody to notice you, you have to do something to be noticed, you know, cause everyone thinks that they have something to say. I mean, everybody does, everybody has a story to tell, but your story could be similar to 50,000 other people. And so what can you do to stand out? And it's the same thing with writing. It's the same thing with anything that you're into. If you're a musician, what can you do to make sure your music is different than somebody else's music? Well, the fundamental aspect of it is sound quality. You know, if you have something good to say, great, but eventually you're going to have to reel in your sound. If you have something that's not good to say and you have excellent sound, well, you have a well sounding podcast, but it's boring. So you're going to lose people there. So you have to figure out where you want to be. Um, you have to figure out what kind of audience you have. I mean, and you can't, it's got to be important to you here because if you get into podcasting, your goal is I'm going to start a podcast tomorrow by next month, I'm going to have 50,000 listeners and I'm going to have, I'm going to make money and just retire. It's just like YouTube. It's just like anything else. It's, it's all about the grind and the, and the more polished you can make it, the more real you can be about it. You know, I think the more success you're going to have with it. Yeah. And it's pretty crazy. There's a, you know, we had a little bit of issue getting started and I just, and it was one of the things was you were trying to get your mic because I, and I understand completely why you're trying to get the mic the way you want it so that you can hear. And then the funny thing about that whole situation was as soon as 
I heard yours and realized mine didn't sound as good. I was like, what am I doing wrong? And so I found out for, you know, probably the last couple of shows, I haven't even had mine turned on. It's been going straight through my AirPods. So that's, that's the thing. Like you don't really know what perfection is until you actually hear it, you know? So that's pretty crazy. That's funny. so, yeah, it, it was pretty funny. I'm sitting there going, no, this isn't going to happen. I'm going to make sure that this sounds good too. So, um, it's okay to laugh yeah. at yourself too, man. That's what people have to understand. Oh, yeah. It's okay to laugh at yourself. Right. Yeah. And so, okay. So we're going to keep going here. So here's kind of, here's kind of where it's at. So we've talked about the podcast. We've talked about, um, one auto and a little bit about you and, and what you're doing. And, um, I want to talk before we get to the last question. I want to talk about one more thing. We talked this morning about you and I did about your passion and what you're trying to find, because we both have this day job where it's kind of the means to the end and it's, it's what pays the bills, but we're doing what we enjoy and what we're passionate about. And you talked a little bit about like, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff and, and we're just throwing everything up on the wall and seeing what sticks. Can you talk a little bit about what drives you to have that passion for what you're doing? What continues to make you want to do the podcast, work on the car, all those things? You know, I, th I think what it is, is um, it's kind of going back to what I said earlier a little bit to where things have to matter. Um, I, like many people, millions of people, you know, my childhood was a little different at times. And I think that I always felt that I wanted to be seen in a sense, like, don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. Don't give up on me. And I think the passion, like back when I used to draw, like I think you've seen some of my drawings on my Facebook page. There's an album called Art I Used to Do or something like that, Hobbies I Used to Be Into or whatever. But I wanted to, I tried really hard to draw so that my drawing stood out. Um, and I think with all the projects that I'm into now, I remember when I was younger, you know, people kept telling me, you know, hey, you're going to be a famous artist. You're going to be big. You're going to make it. And at some point, you don't stop to think and maybe, you know, I can't really blame anybody. You know, people are people. And one thing that I said on my Father's Day episode is like when you're raising kids, all you all you do, all you know is just to raise them the only way you know how. Right. right. So I don't I don't get onto my parents if they didn't push me one way or the other. And I was probably part of that. I probably told them to shut up and don't tell me what to do. You know, I wasn't <laughs> I, really, I wasn't the, the easiest kid, you know, like many of us. Um, but I just listened, right. okay, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. But I never laid out the plan as to how, and I remember one time I designed something, it was called the extensil. And what this thing is, is when you have colored pencils with the art, the pencils get really small and you can't hold them anymore. So, you know, you have about one eighth of the pencil left and you have to go buy more pencils and the pencils are expensive. So I made this little thing, you stick the pencil, the, the, the pencil nub in. And it had like a little ejector on it and it's called the extensile. And, um, my father took me to this place that like makes stuff. I don't know you call them, whatever, like an inventor shop or whatever, some guy. And he said, Hey, I think you have something here. This is really good. And we can get you started. It's going to cost this amount of money and you probably won't make a lot of money. The first year you'll probably make like maybe 50,000. And I'm thinking, wow, 50,000, that's a lot of money. Cause it is. You know, especially when yeah. you're like oh, 16 yeah. or 17. And my father said, hey, you raise half the money and I'll raise the other half. I was like, Psh, screw that. I know it's going to be successful. That's cool. Whatever. And I never went back to it. Um, one, one or two other times in my life, I felt like success was right there. You know, I had like a good idea for something and I just never saw it through. And then I realized that, you know what, I think I'm motivationally challenged in a sense where it's good enough or I, it'll be successful, but I had to learn to push myself. And I think that's why I do everything so hard now. And that's why, you know, when I first opened, when the, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the main guy behind One Auto, but there was three of us originally and I needed them there to help hold me accountable. And it's the same thing with the podcast. Like, I'm glad that I had a co-host initially because I needed them there to, to help hold me accountable on those days that I didn't want to push through it. And now it's like, I know, I remember being that kid who had the extensile and I don't want to do that again. So if someone tells me I've got something really good, I want to make sure I do everything I can. I do the grind. There's no shortcuts in life. I tried all those when I was younger and they failed miserably and I got in a lot of trouble. 
a lot of financial trouble. Sometimes it's about the grind and I want to make sure that I do the grind, I do the work. So at the end of the day, whether it becomes a huge success or it just becomes a moderate success, at least I know I did everything I could. And that, I mean, that goes back to the designing the wrap for the, for the, for the car too. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That is so profound. It, it's just, it's one of those things that you hear a lot of is that it, you have to be willing to do everything that you can, or you, or you didn't even try. I mean, you might as well give up or you're just a quitter, you know? And so, um, I love that. That's a great story to hear. Um, so we're running out of time here, but, and, and I don't want to cut this short, but we, we got to get going. So, Let's talk about where we can find you before I can get to the final question here. Let's talk about where to find Jay, his car, and everything. <laughs> sure. Well, if you want, you can. I'm, I'm all over the place, unfortunately. But if you're on the Instagram, I can be reached at Jay Travels, um, which is J-H-A-E underscore travels. Hopefully, there'll be some show notes or something. And then if you'd like to see the car, you can reach me at N-A-2, like Nancy Allen 2. NSX. Um, the Hard Parking Podcast can be found anywhere, any major place you would typically find your podcast from, whether it's you know, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all of those. And then I'm on Twitter, Hard Parking Pod, and of course on uh, Facebook, Hard Parking Media. Yeah, and I'll definitely link those in the show notes because I think that that's very important that people can be able to find you. Um, Okay, so we're going to get to this last question. Did you have something to say? Yes, silly me. If you want to find out more about the One Auto Movement, you can reach us also at One Auto underscore One Word Movement, or the website is OneAutoMovement.com. All right, I'm done. All right, we'll make sure that we get all that information because I want to make sure it gets all in the show notes so we can make sure people are directed in the right place. All right, so we're going to get to the last question here. Before we get to that, we're going to do the last question sponsor. This week's last question sponsor is Game Face Athletics. They're in Star, Idaho uh, for great custom gear at a great price. Go to Game Face Athletic and tell them that Wes sent you. All right, so Jay, the last question is the same question that I ask everyone every single time. And if anyone wants to be that sponsor, they just need to go click on the link that's on the top of the screen and go ahead and donate to the show. So the question is, is that success is different for every single individual. And we've talked about kind of how you deem that and what that is. But what we want to know is what is the shape of your success? How do you, what do you consider success? I think for me, success, I'm still trying to, to find it but I think it's all about goals, right? So when I say I'm still trying to find it, I've had a lot of success and a lot of things that I've done, but why stop there? Go to the next level. Where, what else can you do with it? So for instance, this podcast, is it, is it a success? I'm going to say it is. I don't get 50,000 downloads, but the people tune in consistently and people give me feedback and I have an audience with it. To me, that's successful. Um, the car, was that a success? It absolutely was a success because I took a big risk on doing everything that I did with it and the doors that it opened for me, you know, looking back again, I'm staring at a, a small scale model of my car on the shelf next to the very cartoon that it inspired me when I was a little kid. Um, I think success comes from within. It's not financial. I mean, you can have a financial goal. But for me, it's just knowing that I did the best that I could and knowing that, that I matter and knowing that I've helped make a difference in others in everything that I do. That's how I define my success. Well, that's a great definition. Jay, I want to take the time to say thank you for spending, you know, your Friday evening with me on the podcast. Um, I hope that uh, you had a good time. And just again, thank you. Well, thanks for having me. It's been great. Yep. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, that is the end of the show, everyone. If you would like to sponsor the last question or have advertisements or sponsor the show, you can go ahead and go to the link that's in the top of the page um, and check it out. Donate to the show. Help us to keep shaping success going. Uh, it, thank you for doing the watch party. If you're listening to this on podcast, again, please help me grow this by sharing this with someone, giving it a five-star rating 
and review. Until next time, I want to challenge you to find the shape of your success. This Have was a great Shaping evening. Success with Wes Tankersley brought to you by Aggressive Marketing Solutions. If you need a team of marketers to help you with social media, all you need to do to start is text WES2020 to 541-709-6502. 541-709-6502. That is Aggressive Marketing Solutions. Have a great day. See you next time.